Hi there, this is Stuart from War Paint Figures and this week we're going to look at some cheap and easy ways to do some movement trays. Hi, I'm Stuart, this is War Paint Figures where we try and bring you some simple solution to some miniature problems. And this week we're going to look at movement trays. So whether you're into historical or Kings of War or Warhammer stroke Old Hammer, this could be the very video for you. So we're going to look at some cheap and easy ways to do some really effective movement trays. They're going to make your game so much easier to do. So stick with us through to the end and you will see the finished product and some bits and pieces as well that you can do to improve it. Remember, if you like what you see, then if you follow and subscribe, that would be brilliant and all the usual. And don't forget to ring that bell uh, to get all our notifications of new videos. So, on with the show. So let's get started and I'm going to use my ACW figures as an example. They're based on metal. They're an inch square, so that's 25 millimetres. I'm going to use art mounting card and that's quite nice thick card. It's not too expensive for a big sheet. You can use thick card. If you use it too thin, then it's going to warp. So let's do a little bit of maths now. Uh, it's a seven wide unit. So let's do a quick calculation. So seven times 25 millimetres. That equals 175 millimetres. That's the area they're going to take up. Uh, now, they're 25 millimetres deep. And now we've got to factor in an extra 2 millimetres around all of the bases as a sort of buggeration factor. So that's going to be 4 millimetres on each side. So now the depth is going to be 29, sorry, 2 mil on each side, 4 in total. And you're going to add 4 on to the width, which makes it 179. I'm going to call it 180, give me a bit of spare. And we're going to call that 30. Now, in addition to that, we're going to have the surround. Now, I like 5 millimetres. It's a good size without interfering with play. So it's going to be 10 millimetres on each measurement for each side. So 190 by 40, and that's how you work it out. Just go through that again. That's your basic base size. Gives you a width of 175. Yeah. Add 2 mil on each end. That's an extra 4. Gives you 179 mil. Might as well make it 180. 25 mil deep. Add 2 there, 2 there, front and back. Comes up to 29 mil. Might as well make it 30. So that's the interior space you're leaving. Yeah. Exterior. I want an extra 5 mil all round. So it's 190, because it's your 180 plus 5 on that side, 5 on that side. And it's your 30 plus 5 at top, 5 at bottom. Okay, so let's get making. First thing we're going to do is measure out the external dimensions on the mountain card. If you remember, those were 190 by 40. So we're going to mark all those in, at least double measure. So you get two dots to join. If you can get three, that's even better and more accurate measurement. Measure twice, cut once, as I say. Then we're going to measure those half centimeter or five millimeter insides for the internal dimensions. That'll give you a set of guidelines which we're going to use to butt the actual supports up to. And we're going to cut this out with a very sharp craft knife. Sharper the better, watch your fingers, because a blunt blade won't cut through or snag the cardboard. And we're going to use bamboo skewers. You can get these in the supermarket and get 50 for like a couple of quid. Mark out the actual measure against, against your actual movement tray blade and just cut that through around to get a nice clean cut. You can use clippers. I do these days when I'm doing a lot. It's easier on the, on the fingers. Mark the other one against the first one and cut that out. Careful of your blade. And then we're going to mark the sides. And we just do those in sequence like this so we can cut them both off together. I'm going to use for this some wood glue. I don't use PVA because it doesn't dry fast enough. Super glue dries too fast and it's too much dangerous to stick in your fingers because we're very close to the surfaces. Uh, I don't use Yuhu or other clear adhesive because you get too many air bubbles in those I find. So you just want to line some wood glue on one side on the base itself and put the bamboo skewer on. Select the most unwarped ones because you do get a few. 
if you get beads of glue just drag them along to get rid of them with a little bit of another skill and just butt them up to the lines look as much from above as you can and this is why we have the sort of two millimeter vibration factor and we're going to check those and those go nicely a little bit snug there from the bamboo skewed a bit warped but it's looking good and there you get a little bit of movement in there but i don't mind that i'd rather have the play so everything fit nicely so next we're just going to take some standard filler pull a little lump in and we're going to add some of our medium sand which you can get from our store the links below and mix that all together so you're anti-texturing to start off with don't use grit because it won't spread very well nor at this stage anyway add some water to sort of reconstitute that a bit and all we're going to do is make a sort of slope with a spatula and yeah this is from my old biology dissecting kit so god knows where that'd be um <laughs> over the years that is um and if you want you can texture this which we'll be showing you later with some fine grit so take that all down go around all the sides smooth the corners down make sure you don't get any on the inside just use this cocktail stick to do that and smooth it down with a wet finger and it's very easy to do next we're going to take some fine grit which is available in our store link below and you're just going to dip that in while the filler is still wet and push it in if there's some sticking out don't worry when it's dry you just scrub along that with an old brush okay so let's paint, start painting these i've undercoated these dark brown and i'm going to use the uh, flat earth from vallejo as the first dry brush it's going to be quite a heavy dry brush almost like an overbrush if you like or a wet dry brush so what it could have called both of these this is where you add in the sand and it really pays off because it brings out a great texture just dry brush across the skewers as well and you sort of make them part of the whole ensemble so next up we're going to use fur brown from army painter i still use these paints sometimes to dry brush i find that's pretty much all most of them are good for now because they're just too thick and don't dilute down well water down well and you just run that across the top of the last one uh, flames of all vallejo middle stone is a great color it's like an ochre color so we'll run that across of course you can do your own schemes for desert or wherever you're doing them as well and you can see the texture in the stones there beautifully and I've just painted these standard dark grey light grey I haven't included that because it's simple to do I use a shadow grey generally as the base uh, like an alpha grey used to be so now we're going to magnetize it so we're going to measure out the internal dimensions and you, this is where referring to your last measurement helps it's really thick and I tend to use the magnetic, the magnetic sheet in the base rather than anything else because it's strong and then if you use metal bases it doesn't half hold them well so I've already marked out that I'm going to cut it with a sharp craft knife or in this case a scalpel and it actually wasn't that sharp I discovered so naughty me actually these sheets you can cut perfectly well and trim down if you need to with a sharp pair of scissors not your partner's best scissors um, because you're going to get it in the neck believe you me um, just an old pair of scissors but they need to be fairly sharp to do this uh, you've got to make sure you at least follow the line or go inside it doesn't matter if it's a little small because it will still work but if you're obviously too big you won't get it in so all you do just double check it goes in take off the backing because these are self adhesive and carefully line it up now I like to go from one end to the other along and just push it down firmly and that's all you require make sure it is a good magnetic sheet and they're not all that good some of them now this particular base I made is a little large it's a question of experience with your models and you can experiment but you saw the other one that we were starting to make was perfect and I use these regularly for my 15mm ancients as well so they're all in and if it's a decent magnetic sheet and these are metal 15 mil miniatures on metal bases from products for wargamers you should be able to do this now the great thing is if you line like a really useful box with an a4 sheet 
uh, you can put all your miniatures on their bases and it'll hold beautifully. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. As you can see, it's really simple to do and you can change that to what materials you have around the house. Um, of course, you can use super glue if you really want to and you want to stick your fingers together, which I don't advise. Um, but I find using the wood glue allows you that flexible um, time to move things around if you need to. Um, all the links to all the products are down below. That's our shop, warpaintfigures.com. And all our grass stuffs are there, uh, and all the flowers as well, and basic materials. But thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon.